Well, it's time on the programme now for our science segment. And today we are taking a look at a decision by the European Medicines Agency to recommend marketing authorization for an Alzheimer's drug. Now, the drug had been originally denied authorization over concerns that the risks outweighed the benefits. So why the change? And is this a miracle drug for Alzheimer's, as has been previously suggested? Julia Seeger, our science and tech editor, with me to try and answer some of those questions. And Julia, first of all, just tell us a bit about this medicine. So the medicine is called Lecanemab. It's commercialized also under the name of Lequimbi, and it's the latest episode, if you will, in a saga that's been going on for several months. Last Thursday, the European Medicines Agency decided to backpedal on a, a decision they had taken back in July, now recommending that all European countries uh, authorize, grant a marketing authorization inside the EU for this drug. Mm -hmm. Now, this is... A, bi a new biotherapy that's intended for early stage uh, patients. So it doesn't cure patient, but it slows down the cognitive decline. And the EMA is now recommending it for certain types of patients. There's a lot of different restrictions. We'll get back to that in a minute. But what's interesting is that the decision is quite surprising to all because of what they had said back in July. So that was only four months ago in a document they had said that there was an increased risk of serious side effects, including bleeding in the brain, but also limited clinical benefits. So they had categorized Categorically refused at the time placing the drug on the European market. They had ruled out, if you will, that the, uh, the benefit risk balance at the time they had considered that it wasn't strong enough for patients. And why then did the EMA change their mind? What happened in the last four months? Well, it's a very good question. Actually, nothing happened. They didn't have access to a new set of data. Nothing actually changed. They looked at the situation again, and they changed their minds. But as you're going to see, the situation is perhaps not that straightforward. Uh, clinical trials have proven the efficiency of lecanemab on, um, on Alzheimer's, proving, for instance, a 27% reduction in cognitive decline in patients who took it compared to the placebo. And that's actually a huge break through because it's the first time that this type of drug that we call an AAD, an anti-amyloid drug, meaning a drug that's going to be able to go inside the brain and dissolve the amyloid plaques that are believed to uh, be responsible for Alzheimer's disease. It's the first time that it shows effectiveness. Alzheimer's, uh, it's very difficult to create a drug for it because it's in the brain. So you first have to be able to, um, to, to first of all, you have to understand that it's uh, created because of those proteins that are we don't know why, but they're going to conglomerate. They're going to get together, consolidate around the neurons, and then create these plaques. And that's what actually uh, reduces the cognitive functions. And the problem is that because it's in the brain, you need to find a molecule that's able to get inside the brain. And the thing is that there's a blood-brain barrier, as you, as you see here. So these are cells that are going to really try to defend our brain and protect it against pathogens and toxins and hormones. So uh, lecanemab is a breakthrough because it can go through the, the, the blood-brain barrier and it can attack those plaques. But you have to understand that there's still a lot of controversy about those drugs. This is very new indeed. It's the first time there's effectiveness here. Uh, and it's there's um, a lot of controversy about uh, the uh, effectiveness and the safety because of those blood bleeds that we were just talking mm. about. So how does that occur? Well, when the, the drug comes and dissolves the plaques, the, the residue, if you will, is then sent to the bloodstream. When that happens, it can create inflammatory, and it has created inflammatory in a lot of patients. And and that creates blood bleeds. So it is a breakthrough, but it's not without risks. And we assume that the European Medicines Agency is really aware of those risks. They're very much aware of it. And you can really sense it when you read their recommendation. They're authorizing the drug for certain types of people. So as I said, early stage patients, but also people who uh, uh, they exclude all patients that have any type of risk factor that could uh, increase, of course, the, the, the bleeding risk. Uh, but to answer your question of why they changed their mind, because nothing actually happened in the last four months, it, they could have folded because of other countries countries have also validated it, the United States, uh, you know, Japan, the UK, China. They could have also folded under the pressure of pharmaceutical lobbies of also, and we don't talk about it uh, often, but patient associations also who are waiting mm -hmm. for a drug to get on the market. And it's important to say that it's been 25 years since we last saw a therapeutic breakthrough. So what we're seeing today is the EMA being very cautious, saying also that all of those patients will be closely monitored with, for instance, regular access to MRI type to make sure that that the, the, the treatment is safe. So what we're seeing is that they're ready today maybe to authorize this treatment, monitor the patients very closely, even if it's not perfect. For some, this is a good thing. It's a bold move. For others, we're opening uh, a Pandora's box here. Julia Seeger, our science editor. Thank you very much.